everyone. Welcome into Comic Book Women. It's just Jen and I tonight. We got this. It's going to be fine. <laughs> We've done it before, right? Wasn't there another episode where it was just the two of us? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's going to be good. I want to um, get a Lucy puppet. <laughs> like have her just pop up on the side, like laughing randomly. She got Rami to take her place. Or Rami. That'd be interesting. Yeah, he's cute. Um, okay, who's in, who do we have in here? We have JT Key Comic. Hello, welcome on in. Cover Lover Comics, welcome. Guys, if you are new to us, welcome. We are here every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time covering a different female artist or writer or character. Um, Ace Cable, hello. Good to see you too. Before we get kicked off, Jen, how was your day? Uh, it was okay. It's funny because every Tuesday I like race home and I get <laughs> home in time to do like one or two things and then I pop up. So I'm mm -hmm. like, how about you? Dude, I was, huh? How about you? I was sitting here at like 6.59 and I'm like, it's just me. I'm like, where is everybody? And I'm like, Ugh. I was like about to panic. And then you showed up. I was like, thank God. Didn't want to be here by myself. Um, let's see. Gore Vidal, good evening. Tomb Toys, welcome in. JJ, so good to see you. And Luke, what's up? And there's Bird City Comics. Hello, Anthony. Thanks for the drink. I had a good weekend. Uh, Anthony and I went to a party on Friday. And it was like a birthday party. And they had like a lobster crab broil buffet type thing. And I don't eat fish. I don't know if you know that about me, but I don't eat fish. So we walk in and it's like this overwhelming wave of like fish smell. And I was like, Anthony was in heaven. He had this big old mound of lobster and stuff. And I kind of picked on rolls, but well, it was a good night. Do you like lobster bisque soup? Uh-uh. Oh, that's the soup Nazi famous infamous soup from uh, Seinfeld. Nope, I won't do it. Nothing, nothing fish. And like, I'm super healthy, so I wish that I liked it, but it's just the Damn smell, it. man. I can't get past the smell. Huh. Yeah. Anyway. I feel like some <laughs> Chicago challenge accepted. There's a lot of places here that have good, like, salmon. I've been to Alaska. And so everybody's like, oh, that's like the best seafood ever. And I, I tried some stuff, but I just could not stomach it. And Anthony's tried to like fish bomb me by like hiding fish in friedness but i still taste it it's still well, there when i was in maine i had like a lobster not yeah it was a lobster sandwich that is delicious we need to go to maine i i lived in maine for years i'm telling you i just i can't get past it man i just can't mm. but this is also the person that like i love black licorice so anyway Seafood buffets are the greatest, but they get really bad if you go to the wrong place. Ooh. Yes, that is true. Just can't do it. Can't do it. Oh, Figure yeah. drawing, welcome in. Love Fiona. Yeah. Fiona Staples. And Glenn Howard. Hello. All right. So uh, before we get started, thank you to Karma <clears throat> Price. You, they act as our sponsors and they provide <laughs> us with all the information that we use. And... Yeah, if you go to their sites, you can use the code FLIPSIDE. It gets you two months of their unlimited membership for $1.99 a month. I wonder if anybody ever actually goes over there after I do that spiel. Do you guys actually do it? Do you guys go to cover price? Yeah, do you, do you guys read the, the articles? We're waiting for responses. It's like, um, <laughs> well, you <laughs> so guys, if you guys want to just try it, I think you get five free comics a day just to like test it and see. Oh, alligator was chewy. Exoskeleton things. What would be an exoskeleton thing? Like lobster. Oh, crab. okay. Crab. Okay. I'm like beetles. That's another great thing. episode of uh, Seinfeld. Is he dates the girl with man hands, and she like just like tears open. <laughs> like it was either crab or lobster, like with her bare hands. Good. It, it always yeah. looks good like anthony will get like this bowl of like hot butter and the meat looks all white and it, it looks appealing and like sushi's beautiful but i just man can't oh dragon can't rolls do. okay anyway <laughs> we're like getting on a totally side wag wagyu wagyu meat is that what he's trying to say i've had that before all right so let's see oh and good jj has a membership paul has a membership good that makes me feel better so who are we covering tonight there you go, Jen. 
Oh, uh, sorry, uh, Fiona Staple. <laughs> it's just you and me, sister. We gotta. <laughs> if I'm asking a question at all tonight, it's gonna be directed to you. Okay, I'm so used to like Lucy being there. <laughs> Hold on, let's 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 try this again. All right, so who are we covering tonight? Fiona Staples. Yes, nailed it. Fiona Staples, which I'm guessing most of you are going to recognize that name off of the Saga series, but she's such a badass. Uh, in fact, has been called one of the best comic female comic book artists of all time. So we're going to be covering all of her tonight. So hopefully you guys are in for the ride. And there's been so much talk about Saga. So it's totally relevant. Okay. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So our co-producer in the background, Britt, brought up like this really cool thing. Since we're not doing a character and telling you their stats, we did artist insights. So, Jen, why don't you cover the first chunk? I'll cover the second. Cool. So, her name is Fiona Sables. She's from, well, she, she's Canadian, right? I, I kept mm -hmm. seeing uh, that that's where she lives now, but I'm like, could she have relocated? But no, then she's I had Canadian. Time. That interview, she's Canadian. she's like, yeah, I'm Canadian. Oh, yeah, that's right. She, okay, sorry. Uh, her median, medium, median? Medium. Medium, medium uh, is digital. <laughs> I it's drink a long that. night, guys. <laughs> uh, technique: uh, rough pencil drafts in, imported into digital uh, media for ink, inking and coloring, which is really cool to watch. There's a couple of videos of her. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, a couple of videos of her uh, just doing her art. It's really cool just to watch. You can just kind of reminds me a little bit of. Who's the guy who does the clouds? Guy that does the clouds. You know, he's like infamous. He like would paint on TV. Shoot. He's a Funko Pop now too. He's all these. Oh, Bob movies. Ross? Yes. Boom. <laughs> Got one. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, very cool. Her key traits. So inked characters on softer, fuller color backgrounds. So again, you're going to think Saga off the top of your heads. Mm -hmm. Um, dynamic natural poses. When we were listening to an interview about her, she does like to kind of keep her figures as close to like the traditional proportions as possible. And nature and fantasy elements are always added to her work. Again, we were watching an interview earlier and she's really big on goblins. Like that was like a thing for her growing up. Yeah. Which she, she showed the picture of the uh, goblins from the labyrinth. Mm. You used to scare the shit out of me that scene. Right? Uh, I didn't include that comic. She did a Lambeth comic. She has over 200 things. So I just, like, it was too hard. Slacking. We'll have to do a second part for sure. We always say that. Have we ever done a part two on anybody? I think once we go through all of them, then we will do a part two. <laughs> <laughs> so in a couple years, we'll cover this one again. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, but then her common color colors, you're going to see lots of yellows, blues, and that pink scale, a little bit of the oranges. I, I think it's interesting that Britt included the common colors, because when you really start to study these artists, it's so true that they have a palette. Like, you think Matina, you always think, of, oh, okay, we have these shades in it. And, like, Frizen, you're always going to see that orangey, sepia look. It's, I don't know. What? I like, I was just looking at the chat, about, like, five people said <laughs> I got it first, oh, suckers. I did all you guys do it. I actually wasn't reading. Well, the they chat, have to like so. type it in, right? And then hit enter. Yeah, my brain works faster than your type. <laughs> Fiona would be a great fashion illustrator. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Can you imagine mm -hmm. if she designed like she did gowns and stuff? It'd be cool. Uh her design sense and clothes running is really impressive. Yeah, I think she's pretty badass. Lag check. I just got that comment, Glenn. So Who's lagging? Glenn is. No, he's a slack check, right? I don't know. How do you lag check? No. Move it around. <laughs> Does that help? <laughs> you're you're on speed on my end, so we're good. Okay, so yeah, again, if you are just joining us, guys, we are going to be covering Fiona Staples. Everybody's been talking about her new saga. Well, not her new saga, her saga series starting back up again in January, which I'm so pumped. I ran out and I was like, Anthony, can we do an exclusive for this? But I guess they don't do exclusives for saga. 
which I think is because Brian doesn't want it done, which we'll get to that. Kind of yeah. a bummer, though. It's like, damn it. All right, so first up, we have Elza Elzenor. But, Elzenor. But apparently she put out a comic book before this. That Done by Dead or something? The no. vampire one? No. It Apparently, her and a friend put out a comic book, and it was in her shop for a little bit. They had it published. I think it was self-published. And oh, what was the name again? Hang on. Let's see if I can find it. Quick this forward. wasn't the one in the interview, though, that they had on the screen. It was like a different one. I know. But in multiple places, it this 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 is cited as her first cover. Okay. Right? But in multiple places, it kept coming up that, like, Dungeon F? Sorry. I kept, she talked about it a couple times in some different interviews, and then it just disappeared. And I was like, what is this? Is All right, let's see. If, if it's self published. Her first published work was Amphibious Nightmare, a 24 hour comic included in the About Comics anthology. Her first series assignment was Done to Death. That was the one I was thinking about from the interview. No, there's another one that she said that when she first started, her and a friend did it. And they put it in her comic shop, so it felt like super legit. So someone out there has to have that self-published mm. first, true first work of it. I just couldn't. I almost want to like. If she ever goes to C two E two or Comic Con, be like, have a question. In this one interview, I'm not a creeper. <laughs> <Or a stalker. laughs> but in this one interview, you mentioned this comic that you did, like the first one you did that was like self-published. What? Where well, couldn't, I... couldn't we just like message her on Instagram real quick? Oh, I don't want to do that. You can, you do did that. that, didn't you do that? Was who did you do that with? Um, uh, yeah, with somebody else, and they I responded. You're right, they did. I should do that. Okay, I will. I don't know, I got scared all of a sudden. You got this, just be like, I'm Jen, host, co, uh, co host of comic book women. They'll respond. Who? What is this? <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> this is cited as her first cover. Okay. But I'm going to put a, what's it called? Question mark next to it. Asterix? Yes. Because I know that there's that earlier one. And then, like you said, there's other ones too. But this is cited as her first cover. From 2006. Okay. From but her first published work was Amphibious Nightmare, which is a 24-hour comic. Let me see. Oh, so the twenty. So that that's okay. So that was a twenty. So there was like a challenge where you had to do a comic in twenty four hours, and they had to just sit there and put it out. She's it was the, the funnest, the wildest thing that she's done. But it was a creative exercise in nineteen ninety. This whole thing started. But this comic is from two thousand six. Devils do. But asterisks. Okay, well, you can get it for two bucks. So, I mean, if you're a fan, it's written by Ken Lilly Pates, and it tells the tale of Merchinson, a disgraced doctor who was recruited um, by an asylum in order to prevent the apocalypse. That sounds promising. It was supposed to go for nine issues, but only five were ever actually published. Hmm. Mark Saracio did the art on issue five under the Devil's Due Publishing House. So maybe she did the cover and he did the interiors. It's kind of mm. neat. All right, let's keep cruising. Yep. Um, I have to click over here. Sorry, guys. There we go. 30 Days of Night. Now, this one I was excited about talking about because I don't know if you guys remember back. We had Steve Niles on. It was on Comic Book Woman, wasn't it? We had an interview with him. It was like before, over, before the new year. Yeah. Dude, he was a cool year. dude, too. He was yeah. just the that lag was. Oof. That's right. He had a wicked lag. So like we would talk to him, you guys, and it would take like 15, 20 seconds for him to respond. Then we'd be like talking over him. It was super awkward, but it was still a good interview. Um, okay. So tell us a little bit about this one. Uh, so this is actually, wait, hang on in the chat. Okay. So yeah, th th JJ, she does have another comic written with a friend that they self published and put in her comic book store. That's not that one we just talked about. It's something else. So it's different. 
So somebody but out there, find it. If it's self-published, that has to be super low numbers. But it'd be so <laughs> cool to see, like, her. Yeah, anyway. Uh, so this came out in 2011. And it's a 1 in 10. Now, I looked everywhere. And I couldn't find a sale. I couldn't find a listing. And I was like, what the heck? Is it a ghost? I think it might be a ghost. This is number one? Yeah, number one from the 2011 series. Which only had three issues, right? And it's a one in ten. Oh, man. Maybe it is a ghost then. But there's none listed. There's none uh, sold. So hmm. I was like, what, what? I don't know what to do. So if anyone has it and bought it, tell me the price you got it for. Because I'm curious. <laughs> and Lucy likes this one, too. Yeah, maybe they are just all bought up because this this movie, you guys made me watch this, even though I don't like scary shit. And this is a scary ass movie. This is not like your Edward Cullen type vampires. This is like, but I'm I'm a total wimp. But this was like terrifying. I had a hard time making it through this movie. I think it's just crazy. But yeah, we had Steve Niles on. So if you guys go way back in the day, you'll see an interview with him. What do you think of the cover? It's scary. But Lucy liked it a lot because that this totally fits in her her wheel uh, her wheelhouse of of like I just uh, the horror scary. stuff. That it, movie it, also made me not want to move to Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> Alaska's so pretty too. Like it's so beautiful. It's so there. dark. I, yeah, I kind of like that though. Like really? Yeah. With the sun? Well, you're you're in Arizona. <laughs> I, I kind of like it. Like, I don't know. This movie was nuts. My daughter said, suck it up and let's keep watching. I would do the same thing. Yeah, Jonathan, I think this cover is interesting because, like, I think she may have purposely kind of separated the eyes a little bit more just to kind of give it more of an animal feel. Like, she's yeah. kind of dehumanized this woman. And mm -hmm. she has those the teeth, man. It just looks like it's ready to shred you to bits. Blech. Anyway. So. But it's a go. I, I I couldn't find anything about it. I couldn't find any sales data on it. So if anyone out there again has it, remembers seeing it listed for something, let me know. So, there's nothing you checked eBay. Damn, that's crazy. There's, there's other covers available from that series, but hmm. Wait, <laughs> likes Alaska, but lives in a state that's a literal opposite. I know. All my family's here. If my family wasn't here, I would have moved a long time ago because Arizona's rough, man. You burn yourself all summer and the winter's gorgeous, but it only lasts like two weeks. It was really, really hot. <laughs> I know. It's super hot here. And dry. And so dry. Yeah. <sighs> but you loved it because you got to see me. True. <laughs> all right, let's keep going. Uh, next up. Oh, here we go. So... I don't, I don't think anybody watching hasn't heard of Saga. I mean, this is, this, it's interesting because I did some research here. So you, it's an epic space opera fantasy that was pulled. A lot of its content kind of mirrors Star Wars. Uh, they they compared it, or I've read that it was compared like Star Wars meets Game of Thrones, which, whew, that's like two of my favorite things. So uh, it was written by Brian Vaughn, which if you're watching, I would really, really love to do an exclusive for this book. Like I would love to do an exclusive. I already have an artist in mind. Just let me do it. Let me do it. Anyway. <laughs> Illustrated by Fiona Staples. First off, you've read this, right, Jen? I haven't finished the series. I know it's coming back up again. I yeah. would like to finish it. And there's something at the end of we we cover the up and coming looking forward to that we'll talk about more but uh this is a limit to 500 diamond retailer summit cover so you lucky lucky retailers that got to go to the summit <sighs> i'm super jealous so the story guys depicts a husband and wife which you're seeing on the cover alana and marco they're from different extraterrestrial races and they're fleeing the authorities in this galactic war and they have their daughter Hazel with them. And Hazel periodically will narrate some of the comics if you haven't read it. I like when they do that. Uh, it's been, it had wide acclaim. So it had, it's one of the most celebrated comics being published in the United States, which I thought this was interesting. It outsold The Walking Dead. Well, 
she she has she stated in a couple of her interviews or one of her interviews when they took a poll like a write-in poll like annually that 40 percent were female that is awesome that this this kind of story so listen all the people listening who have a girlfriend or a wife or a significant other that's not into comics this is a good intro into comics. That's not your typical comic book story. That's a hundred percent true. This is like, I mean, one of the first scenes is a rather graphic birthing scene, but most women can kind of, well, some women can kind of emphasize with that type of pain and like the way the artwork is done. It's just, it's, it's pretty crazy. So oh. it went on hiatus after reaching its midpoint issue 54 in July of 2018. So it's been like two years since you've seen new issues of this. What were you going to say? Uh, that her and Brian K. Vaughn, <clears throat> much like Trish and Trish Forstner and Tony, Tony. Fleece, uh, they split 50-50-50. So Brian came to her about this story, but they she is the artist, and they split Saga is 50-50 for those two. Huh? What? Oh. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a really sm that's smooth. I mean, mm -hmm. right? Can you imagine being yeah, on a speed meeting and they bring you a book? That'd be cool. Just bring a bunch of them because that's how you get new people into the hobby, right? Just here you go, here you go. And they're like, what the? Yeah, just spread them around. Um, maybe not this one because you're looking at eight hundred and twenty dollars for the raw comic. <laughs> or if you get a nine point eight, if anybody out there has one, put it in the chat because that would be pretty cool. Nine point eight of this book is going for four thousand dollars. <sighs> well, it's only there's only 500. That's yeah, it. and then I know a lot of retailers don't. They're just like me. I mean, not anymore. I think, but back then, right? That's part of like the struggle of being a retailer. Like we get these lists of all these books, and it's like, should we do these ones, and or should we should we not do this one? Like I told you, I really wanted to do May's book. Like I was like, this is a winner. People are gonna go ape shit over it, and nobody gives a crap about that book. It's a good story though. It's a great story. And Anthony's like, Laura, I just, I don't, I don't think it's going to hit the way you think it's going to hit. And I'm like, no, it's going to. I was so confident in that book. But and that's like, also, it, it's tough jumping onto a new, especially indie title when things do cost four to $5, right? I think yeah. some of those books that are really well written, they'll come back, right? They may not have hit with what the, the gusto that you wanted, but it's the long game. I know like one person that's read it and that's like me. Me? Nobody else. And I was like, you read it too? Yeah, I'm, I, it's that's on my sub. Aww. I subbed it. There's thing you when you guys tell me about stuff that you like, I sub it. Aww. You love me. <laughs> I love you too. Sorry, we're live right now, huh? <laughs> Let's keep going. Uh, okay, hold on. And then the last recorded sales value was fourteen fifty one. That was for a nine point four, and it is on an upward trend. No surprise there, because this is going. You are going to have the return of the series with issue number fifty five in January. So a few yeah. more months, it'll pick up. This is available. You can get the story number one. Image puts out like image firsts for a dollar. So you you can go to most comic book stores should have saga number one, not this cover, but the story for a dollar. So that's a good. Ooh, that'd be good stocking stuffer. For the holidays. Yeah, just kind of like gently roll it. <laughs> I'm like sitting there, I'm like, I know it's only a dollar, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, it's a very, it's noted for its diverse portrayal of ethnicity, sexuality, and gender social roles, and for its treatment of war. It kind of just covers everything. I don't think there's anybody that wouldn't enjoy some aspect of this book. So <laughs> highly recommend it if you haven't already. The new tab compendium is really reasonable and usually under 50, often even cheaper. And then Ooh. Paul found a copy of the 30 Days Night Staples cover for $105 or best offer. Really? It seems like a lot for a one in 10, but if you can't find it anywhere. But so that whoever has it on eBay is setting that bar. <sighs> setting it high. Okay. Let's keep going. Thanks, Paul. Uh, I don't know what this is. Bubblegum this, variant? This is just saga number eight. But it's bubblegum variant. I started collecting these because of you. What was no, it? it's not because of me. Uh, uh, no, it was because of you. You brought no, up the one uh, Sana Takeda cover. Because of... Oh my god, what's his name? Why am I blanking? Maximus? Ultra? No. He was bubblegum covers long... 
oh god i know okay everyone watching right now if you are on instagram or if you've watched toasted with Lipside, he's an awesome dude who loves bubblegum covers what is his name i'm gonna go on instagram right now but he's the reason he brought it to my attention because he likes bubblegum covers i started then, collecting them what? this is like a new thing for me i'm actually really i think they're pretty cool. long short yes thank you thank you Sorry, i didn't mean to get so loud <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Thanks Longshore, Louis. Paul knew yes. too. Thanks, Paul. Yes, Mr. Longshore. <laughs> Love the covers. This is number eight. Um, if you get the second print, the second print actually has the trade dress of Saga in it. But this, oh. is, this is the first print. Yeah, I like it too. It's a cool cover. I think the bubblegum stuff is so fun. Um, I'm still trying to get the Miss Marvel. I haven't been able to track that one. Uh, the Stephanie Hans cover. That's tough. I know, that's a rough one. But I'm working on it. I'm going to have a whole collection of bubblegum and I want to make a whole wall of bubblegum variants. Somebody else was saying that they're, like, since it's kind of like a niche market, is it mm-hmm. niche or niche? We're going to say niche. Uh, yeah. there, there's also like people that collect Spider-Man covers that have pigeons on them. Have you heard this? No, I've heard of, there's a guy at one of the comic book stores I go to sometimes because I wanted a copy of something and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, we only got one. And we have one customer who was request a long time ago that anything with an ice cream cone in it is his. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, anything with an ice cream cone, he's going to just buy. Like, that's like a thing going forward till like eternity until he dies. And I was like, that, okay, so if you get two and he's like, but we're only going to get one. I'm like, damn it. Wow. Ice cream. So there's a pigeon one too. Yeah, apparently, guys, if you're watching, correct me, but I believe it's Spider-Man. They Certain books have, like, pigeons walking around the backgrounds, or there will be, like, a random pigeon flying. So people collect covers that have pigeons on them. And I was like, oh, man, I'm just I'm just working. Glenn has all of the bubblegum variants. That would be so cool. Yeah, the Melina cover is really nice, too. That's the one where she's on the roof, you know? Uh, I have that one. I haven't gotten the, the Hans cover yet. But yeah, I, I, pigeons is a thing. Do you have anything like that that you collect? Just for like weird reasons? Not yet. I wonder if I'll start to develop that. I think today I, I came across that I like Mandalorian so much in uh, Sabine Run because it's a very Rocketeer. I love that. Because I even bought that one that came out recently because it had the Rocketeer homage. Right. What was that? Oh my God, I'm blinking again. Oh, it was an indie flame. It was recent too. Blue flame or something or mm-hmm. blue. Gosh, gosh, darn it. Shit. All right. Well, <sighs> one of those days. On. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So this is number eight. You said, yeah. Saga eight, number eight from 2012. First print. Raw comic, roughly eight bucks, $85 for a nine eight. And if you are a bubble gum variant collector, which I think is so badass, this is for you. Moving on. Oops. Rat Queens. I had to look this up because I've never read this series, but it's a pack of booze guzzling, death dealing battle maidens for hire. Have you read this? Um, I just put it on my to read list because they have another a dollar copy of a reprint at the shop that I work at, and my one empl- uh, coworker loves the series so i was like okay i'll i haven't read it yet <laughs> but he freaking likes it so this is at the one in ten from september 2013. uh really quickly we'll get back to that look at this in the spider-man video game one side quest was finding the location of certain pigeons i yes see it's a thing it's actually a thing and blue flame number one daniel variant rocketeer homage yeah, I remembered it right. <laughs> <laughs> we remembered. <Sorry>. Yeah. <laughs> We're totally cheating tonight. It's okay. There's only two of us, so you guys have to just bear with it. Okay, yeah. So this it looks like an interesting series. Uh, darkly comedic sass and sorcery series starring Hannah the Rockabilly Elven Mage, Violet the Hipster Dwarven Fighter, and Dee the Atheist Human Celeric, and Betty the Hippie Smidgen Thief. You know what this is going to probably this episode is going to become? Hmm. Books you can get for an image for the dollar, <laughs> the reprint. for. So this is this is probably a really good gift episode. I feel like image should be paying us. 
for all the promotion we do for I'm them. Do <laughs> yeah, they are. John, if you're out there, we're, we're working here. Throw us like a free free book every month. That'd be cool. Uh, okay, so anyway, back to the stats. Raw comic, you're looking at $63. No graded information, huh? Mm-hmm. And the asterisk oh, means the last one, the average sale last one sold was six over six months ago. It says the five issue series was a sold out mm-hmm. hit series. So yeah, good luck finding that one. But again, very neat cover. Doesn't look as similar to me as her other stuff. I guess the coloring's kind of there, but I wouldn't look at this and go, oh, that's a Fiona Staples cover. Maybe a little mm-hmm. bit because of the flesh tones, but not really. There's nothing about this that really I identify with her. What do you think of it? I'm like trying to like look. I, I like when I get closer to the screen to see if I can see it better. Mm. I mean, I, I like it. I'm, I look forward to reading to reading it because I, I want to see what the hype, hype is about from my one coworker. Meh. Let me know. Mm-hmm. You fill me in on this one. Mm-hmm. All right. Next up, Fiona Staples Digest number one. What in the world is this? So sometimes I like to find something that is different. (laughs) And this is different. Uh, It's a collection. It's like a sketchbook. I want it now, but not. So when you search for it on eBay and you go sold listings, there's a lot of freaking prices with the line through it, but the September 3rd one is the only one that doesn't have that line. And I was like, okay, so $55. And then the only ones that are listed currently are these two that are like in the, the 100 to $200 range. The 9.8, she signed it, and then they got it graded, which is interesting because it's not a, it's a sketchbook, but they, huh. they graded it. And I just think it'd be cool to have and have her sign the inside cover. For fifty five dollars, so I was going to ask you, like, what would you pay that for an artist that you like? Sketch cover book, sketchbook. Only if it was like a viable option to go and have signatures or remarks done on it. If it was just something I was going to add to my collection, probably not. But if it's like, oh, I'm going to a con and she's going to be there, and I know for a fact I can get it over into the line and get something, then yes, I would. I mean, I, I would probably pay if she was selling it for 50 at her booth Mm. i think i would buy it from her for for that price but i wouldn't wait what wait tails shall i copy and paste the link to the 24-hour comic that includes fiona from amazon hell yeah that'd be awesome that'd be very cool thank you for doing that sorry i'm totally neglecting the comments no, copy oh, and paste it. That would be that would be really helpful. Yeah. Nice. Um, I'm not sure if you can post links to the YouTube chat. Oh. oh. Oops. Maybe you could put it in the comments after the show yeah. ends. Yes, do that. Because that'd be cool. That. That'd be really cool. All right. So, yeah, that was kind of a neat little find. I'm glad you included that in this. Betty and Veronica, I like this cover. I think it's fun. Hey, look at Jen. This could be our Halloween costumes. Ah. Uh. Betty and Veronica, come on. This is perfect. <laughs> you better hope that Lucy never wins one of our bets because this would be like I, a good one. I'm not wearing shells. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem comfortable, but I mean. They don't seem comfortable. I don't know. what <laughs> They could have used like seaweed. If I was a mermaid, there's so many other materials. Like even just like Ooh. find some old netting Ooh. or something. Have you seen seaweed up close? Underwater, it feels fine. Underwater, it's like nice and gooey, isn't it? What kind of seaweed have you seen? In Florida, it's like dirty and there's like little like mites or like seaweed little buggies in there. No, th- you have to think of like Ariel. Like, you know, all the seaweed. It's in a that cartoon, is- though. That's not like in real life. It's gross. Okay, so if you're not going to have your boobs held up <laughs> with shells, what are you going to use? If you can't use shells, you can't use seaweed. People's bikinis tops that they've lost in the ocean. Just repurpose bikini top. <laughs> no. How often do you think that happens? You go into the ocean with a top, I you mean, come Miami out without Beach, one. I feel like a lot of Miami Beach, you know. <laughs> just saying, just saying. Coconuts, eh? That's a good one. That's not a bad one. That would be comfy. 
Jesus. Anyway. Yeah, back to the... <laughs> Betty and Veronica. So this is issue 267. Uh, anything special about it? What's, what, what's making it sell for 18? It's a very from 2013. She said that when she was younger, she used to read Archie and Rin Tin Tin. And so I just thought, out of all the covers that I've seen of Betty and Veronica, it's just nice. It's nice. I like the fireworks. It's very aerial, this whole thing. And like that's like a poor man's flounder down there. Mm hmm. Well, because it's Jughead. Do you see the, the crown and the nose? That's Jughead as a as a oh fish. <laughs> yeah. It's it's cute. This is a cute cover. I've never read the Betty and Veronica series. I think that's one that would be fun. Another one that you guys could recommend to your girls or your daughters or whatever. I don't think it's inappropriate in any way. No graded information on this one though. Just a cute cover. And mine and Jen's next Halloween costume. Eighteen bucks though. It's not bad. For just you want to pay eighteen dollars? Or you would. I would wait for it to go down a little bit. Yeah, I would probably I'd look buy. for it. <laughs> but I like it. Like oh. if I have if I had more money and I was more well off, I'd be like, 18 bucks, yeah. But I will look in the back issue bin for sure for this. <laughs> Isn't it be cool to have her sign it in like a like a metallic purple or something at the top, top right. Like like a pretty. firework. Anyway. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this one. Large clamshells. That's a good suggestion. Man. If so you're a mermaid, though, wouldn't you just like, this is a weird conversation, but I would just be free, right? Why even worry about it if you're under the ocean? All right. When I was like, <laughs> uh, when Ellie was eight years old, there's this mermaid documentary that went, it circulated. Do you remember this? It was like, everybody thought it was so real. He found like a mermaid on the beach. It was all over Netflix. And I was like, I'm going to watch this with my kid. And it like traumatized Ellie. She won't go in the water to this day because it like ruined her. It was really scary. But I was telling her and I was like, you know, Ellie, don't worry about it. And she's like, don't worry about it. You don't think mermaids are real? And I'm like, well, we've only explored 1% of the ocean. So it could be. Yeah. I mean, there could be some truth I to agree. it. Okay, so real quick, call, a couple of weeks ago, I went to a small con and I bought a Darkwing Duck one through five from the first series. She did, yeah. For $18. Yeah. And it's five comics. I just did it. I was like, I don't do I'll do it more if I'm in person and I see something I really want it. That's how you get me. You can't get me through the internet. Right? eBay. When I see something on eBay, I'm like, eh, yeah, meh. But I think, oh, wait, I did pay $20 for the, oh, shoot, Black Widow second print of number six, the first print of Lucy. Oh, you, you paid for free comic book day books. Does that oh, count? Free. Huh? No. Wait, that's true. You didn't buy one? Oh, I did buy that one. But that was, that was only like a dollar or two. So I'll do it every now and then. Just not, not. <laughs> Two shops have eliminated their dollar bins. Why? Yeah, they're raising them. A lot of them are raising it. Like uh, there used to be one shop that had 50 cent bins. And now it's like a dollar, dollar 50. But some, some have gone to two. Like they're not, it's really hard to find like at a comic book store. But if you go to uh, comic conventions, you can still find the one to do $2 bins. Oh, the most ever paid for a book it was probably that, that FF, um, Fantastic Four number, I think number six. It's the one after Doctor Doom. It's his second appearance. That was graded 4.0. I bought that for not, that was the most. Oh. How much? I think it was like two to Hundred. four. Hundred. <laughs> Wow, I'm actually, I'm surprised by that. That was, because I want the original, okay, I would like very much in my whole heart to own the first Doctor Doom first print. But it's out of my, it's it's, it's too, that's too far gone. So yeah. when I realized that, I went for the, the second appearance and it had <clears throat> Namor also on the cover. And I was like, okay, that's still an FF 
under issue 10. Like, this is probably the only chance I'm going to have to, to get a 4.0, which is decent. To me, like, an older comic 4.0, 3.0 is decent. Like, you, you're not going to get 9.8. <laughs> like, so, yeah. But that was... The most you've ever spent. Yeah. By yeah. far. How about you? Mm, all of, like, my big ones back there I bought as part of collections and collections work differently. You know, you're, you're buying in bulk. One that I've, I mean, mm, I didn't even spend that much. Cause like even the Batgirl 23 over there, I only spent like $40 on. I got that for cover price. It was on my pool list. Did you really? Yeah. Damn. I only got one. So I'm like four, four bucks, five bucks. I have four now, but they're like, I bought them all. Four of them? Yeah, but I bought them all like not for cover price. Uh, out of the out of this world up there, you guys can't see it, but it's like an alien kind of coming up on like a blonde chick in a bikini. Mm -hmm. I bought that for Anthony, and that was like three hundred dollars. Does that count? Yeah, that counts. It's probably the most expensive I've ever spent. Normally, we just buy collections and I cherry pick them. And get nice. all the stuff I want out of them. I'm like, mine, 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 mine. But luckily, <laughs> like, that's where I got all my prison. Like, you know that first... <laughs> what was that? that, was that just like Anthony buying a collection. And you're just like, just going through. And he's like... <laughs> he gets so mad. He's like, Laura, you can have one. You can have one book. And I'm like, what? I'm like, I can't do it. But what was the first book that uh, Jenny Frizen did? Not the hack slash one. Uh, with the pug on it. It has the pug. Shit, what is that called? Come on, she's only like, it's like that pug that smokes. Oh. Anyway, I got that in this last collection. I was so excited. I was going to get signed. Yeah. All right, so moving on. Miles Morales, the ultimate Spider-Man. This is a cool cover. Was this her first Marvel? Um, I do not know that. But this is from 2014. Okay. And it was one in 50. It might be her. Shoot. More research is needed. Uh, I just, I went to search it and I put Fiona Apple. <laughs> That's wrong. No, I'm telling you, when you type in Fiona, every time I did it, Apple came up. And I was like, man, I don't want to listen to that 90s. I want to listen to the 90s music, but I got to have focus. Uh, I used to love Fiona Apple. And uh, Allison, no, Aunt, what is it? Morissette. Alanis Morissette. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, I did a variant cover for Ultimate Spider-Man number one. Let's see what she's saying about this. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually not my first Marvel work. I did Spider-Woman short for Astonishing Tales and a Wolverine variant yeah, in 2009. That did pop up. I did that. And you can get that for super cheap. So why is this one $900? Because it's Miles Morales' first solo. And it's a 1 in 50. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Nine hundred bucks raw, twenty five hundred dollars if you want a nine eight, and it is on an upward trend. <laughs> you spent two hundred and uh, wait two point five k on what? What did you buy? I want to know. Is he saying he's? Are you saying you spent two point five k, Dave? I want to oh, know. If you, is he talking about this comic? I don't know. Yeah. Because comic says it's two point, right? I don't know, Dave. You got to elaborate there because now I'm curious. <laughs> when I was at uh, in Baltimore, the Tales from the Flipside guys, Rob's Comics was there, and he was selling books that were like thirty thousand dollars. And I would like walk over, and I'm like, "Can I touch it?" He's like, "Yeah, you, you can. You can hold it." And I'm like, oh, like holding <laughs> these like beautiful grails, and I'm like, "Okay, take it back." I'm like, "That made me nervous." It's crazy, but like they were selling stuff, so people do go to these things and drop thousands of dollars. Yeah, some people are more more financially, you know, than me or the average person. <laughs> he spent one k and he bought it from JJ. What was it? Oh, you don't have to tell us. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> you have to tell us. But, uh, yeah, this book is pretty hard to find. Uh, yeah, okay. A Miles Morales PMG card sold for $8,000. I had a chance to buy this for four fifty. dollars Oh, you pass on it? That's rough, buddy. We've all done that, though. Right? There's all been 
there's been times where I'm like, damn it, I should have done this. All right, moving on. I like this cover. I'm a fan. Thor number one. This is the variant. 128 for a 9.8. That's a little bit more reasonable, I think. Uh, what do you think? I mean, it's, it's a 1 in 25 from 2014 when Jane Foster took over the Thor title, which we need to read that. We did the th- Red Thor God of Thunder, or I reread it and you guys read it, remember? Yes. God of Thunder. So this that is the- like, I feel like that was like pulling teeth, though, for you. You were like, Laura, Lucy, read the next one. Well, read the next one. Because Thor God of Thunder is p- pivotal, pivotal, very pivotal. important to read. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for upcoming MCU stuff and I think that Thor Jane Foster run would be nice too to read but so yeah for 125 what was the price again like 50 bucks raw mm. oh that, that, was, that was the last sale at, uh, a couple days ago yeah like almost a week ago it's not bad uh, you spent a thousand dollars on a something is killing the children number six, one in twenty-five. Oh, money well spent, my friend. I am a huge Frizen fan, so yes, I like that. Nice. Um, okay, let's keep cruising. Before we keep going, guys, we're at like in the thirties for viewers. Make sure that you give the show a thumbs up and subscribe. We are here every Tuesday. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then the girls and I also do a show on Fridays right before the Hot 10. What did we call it last week? We're the (laughs) pregame. You can pregame with Neri Nirvana. We go live right before the Hot 10 at like 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. The only run, God of Thunder, I regret selling. Well, because now the movie's coming out and it's going to be like this big old thing. Mm Mm-hmm. I, I kind of cheated, though, and I used the comic story, and <laughs> I was, like, working. I'm off uh, to Norway. Going up to Norway. What are you looking at? Oh, that's cool. cool. Ooh, take pictures. Yeah. yeah. True. <gasps> it would be really nice cool if you brought the hammer with and took pictures. And be like, oh, there's a hammer. <laughs> yeah, do that, Dave. Your, your wife or girlfriend will be like, nerd. Total nerd. Ask Robin Fordham how about the Panini Italian version of this cover. Why? What does it go for? Is it like crazy expensive? I'm I, guessing it is. Probably. Foreign comics, man. That's a whole nother thing. Where is Rob tonight? He's not in the show. You know, adulting. No. Every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Rob needs to be <laughs> here with me. Moving on. Uh, so now this is saga number 54. As we were talking about earlier, this is where the series left off. We are going to see it kicking back up again in January 2022. But it's a beautiful cover. The cover, I, from what I've heard, I haven't read this one, but I heard that the cover definitely reflects where this leaves off. But I haven't read it yet, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah, when you're mentioning the last comic, I'm like, it's on there. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> Yay! But 2018? Okay. That's... That's such a that, that hiatus is. Was it because of COVID that they got delayed or something? Like, what took them so long to keep going? I don't know. I know that she was saying that they took a few months in between each arc just to like decompress and get, get up on the, the next arc. But I mean, between COVID and other probably other jobs too, right? Yeah, I mean, but. Two years, that's a long time to keep people waiting, I feel like. Although maybe maybe it'll end up being like the best marketing thing ever because this is all you're hearing about right now. And as we get closer and closer, people are going to be just, hey, found you guys. Lingus, what's up? Guys, that is Brian Lingus. He is one of our original Bird City Comics peeps, and he is also the artist that designed the Bird City Comics logo. Cool. Yeah, he's good people. If you're not following him, you should be. He just did like a whole card game thing. He's a good guy. All right. How I really disappointed will you be oh. if you get to the top of the mountain and all you get is a Loki variant? That'd be kind of cool, though. <laughs> I really like um, But I, I really like the simplest, like the, the, the blood. And then I just really, she did a great job with that. I just, oh, yeah, I like it. And even like the little bubbles from the, I just, yeah. No, it's beautiful. It's very simple. I think like I'm becoming a fan of this red on teal 
look. Remember the uh, Stephanie Hans book, the Black Widow one, where she's holding that smoking gun? I think that when you use the black, teal, and the red, it just creates such a powerful piece. Mm -hmm. And now that I've taken over the art for Bird City, I'm going to start using that more. I think that's going to become something that, because I just think it's a strong uh, trio there. Mm -hmm. Uh, they gave time to Brian K. Vaughn to finish writing the rest of the series. Hmm. And I guess he is like, he has a wife and a family and blah, blah, blah. And where are these comic book <laughs> logos? Oh, yeah, he did do one of the logos. That's right. Forgot. Sorry. Yes. Loki will be fine. <laughs> we'll do fine. <laughs> Have you guys read We Live? We did. That was actually one of our, uh, wasn't that one of our free comic book day picks? Yep. Yeah. So the last issue. 15 to 20 dollars raw and graded 115 bucks mm. like that was two years ago that's pretty good, mm -hmm. pretty good. Mm -hmm. and it's on an upward trend mm -hmm. so if you guys have this in your boxes somewhere wasn't it you're watching right now aren't you the one that said like as soon as like, well, no, that you were saying that as soon as something comes up for like TV or movie that's when you sell but what about this if the next issue is about to come out, is this the time to sell or is this the time to hold? You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you was saying like, if you hear like, as soon as the news drop, that something type is getting optioned, then, then you sell. I think is how I understand that. <gasps> yes, Grumble. That was the, that was it, Harry. Oh my gosh, we were talking about that earlier. That was it. I got the Grumble Jenny Frizen with a pug and it's signed. So Anthony was not thrilled. He's like, put it back. I'm like, nope. <laughs> uh, saga one has been going up yep mm -hmm. everything's kind of on the rise because january is just around the corner mm -hmm. all right what is this isola isola oh man i need I, my glasses bro so isola i i really like that series and she did number eight I, which was I'm 19 not, and i like right. the cover what's it about I want you to read it first. I don't want to give anything away. Just give me like a, an, an introductory. Yeah. When I first read this, I went in blind. And then I was like, give me more. But it was really unfortunate because you're like, where is it? And it's out there. And, you know, and then it would come out intermittently. And I was like, ah. Oh. But no one else really. I feel like people were really upset with uh, that Superman DC Watchmen tie-in. But no one cared about Isola being like that same kind of it wasn't coming out on time. We got drunken what? chat in the house, guys. Mighty Mel V is here. We should have had him come on. You could have been our third comic book woman because Lucy's not feeling well. Like we're, we should have called you, but you're probably at work, huh? Oh, um, Lucy also really liked Saga number eight, but we talked about that was our number four. Oh, yes. She, okay. the, with the bubblegum. Lucy also liked that one, that cover too. Those are the two that really popped out to her. Sorry. Ace forget. said this is an uh, epic story. Great interior art. Thank you, guys. Data suggests that selling when the first trailer drops, not on the announcement. Really? How does that work? Damn it, Mel. You and your job are really just becoming a hindrance for me. We're going to need to... Congratulations, by the way. Guys, Mighty Mel V is officially an LLC. He's going legit. Uh, Anthony and I drank some champagne on your behalf. You are going to kill it. So excited for you. You gotta, you gotta reach out. We'll, we'll team up on something. Cause that's just, that's awesome. Very good news for you and well-deserved. Um, okay. Back to this cover. This is stunning. Again, fantastic use it? of color. Huh? Will you read it? Well, I mean, since you read May's book, I feel like I owe you one, right? Cool. But yeah. how hard will it be for me to find number one and everything? No, 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 okay. no, but I like that two people in our chat have read it. It, it makes yeah. me happy. Mel's work is Laura's nemesis. Yes. I just want Mel here <laughs> at all times. Uh, no, yeah, Lucy's okay. She's just, uh, she told you guys, I think on the last show, she is pregnant. So, you know, morning sickness can just be a all day thing. I don't know why they call it morning sickness. It's morning, afternoon, night. You can just feel like shit some days, but she is good. And I will pass along your best wishes. That was very nice of you. 
what's what did we think of what's the furthest place from home? I've only read the first issue, but I love it. I think it's a really strong read, and I think it's something that you could easily see being optioned. Have you read that one, Jen? Yeah, it is different. <laughs> I think it won't Not be everyone's cup of tea. Yeah, and that's fine. Like again, <clears throat> in this industry of a billion and one stories not all of it's going to speak to everybody. So it's okay. And if you buy something and you're like, eh, I didn't like it. Think for a second who in your life might appreciate this kind of story and then gift it to them. Hmm. I like that. There's always something, somebody out there will like it. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, Mel, I, the struggle is real. I told her since it's a girl, she should name it after me. And she's like, I'll think about it. I'm like, all right, I'll settle for middle name. What would be a girl version of Mel's name? Melinda? Melanie? Melinda? Matilda? Melrose? Matilda? Mel? Matilda? Mel Tilda? Mel -tilda. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> Mel Tilda. <laughs> Melvina? <laughs> right? Melvina? I don't know. Melissa. Melissa? Oh, that's an obvious one that we totally skipped. Uh, so he, okay. Mel, this is a great way of putting it. Walking dead without zombies meets Lord of the flies. That's a good way of kind of summing up that series. Uh, maybe they call it that because they live in Northern Alaska when the sun rises like 20 days or something. Really? <laughs> Mel Tilda. <laughs> I think I'm going to start calling Mel that just for fun. <laughs> Mel Tilda. <laughs> Okay, let's keep going. Uh, all right, so coming soon, we have the include a slide for something that you guys look forward to. Uh, Jen, what do we have left? So, <clears throat> saga number fifty-five comes out January twenty-six. It is not FC FSC it has not yet passed, but I'm warning people. I feel like with the potential paper shortage, because I'm not really seeing it right now. Right, is anyone else with comp? Uh, they did so an announcement. People? The they White did. House like they're saying they it's did. gonna get it's gonna get he said it's going to be cause disruptions, which means shit's gonna hit the fan. I, I haven't yet seen it, but to me, what that means is if FOC, I would get this order into your comic book store sooner than later, right? If you tell your comic book store, put me down for one for sure, they'll do like a pre pre order. Like if you wait till FOC, because especially with Image, remember Image did that releasement. Releasement. Oh my god. Well said. Did that, re did that release of Image won't do second prints anymore? No, they're like they told the retailers that they're not basically getting reprints because before, if we had like a ton of damages, you contact Image and let them know, and they'll do reprints and they send them back. You know, you guys have all dealt with that when you have a book and the retailers like, oh, they came in damaged, so you have to wait an extra seven weeks. They're basically saying that's not happening anymore. But but moving forward. There won't be multiple printings like second, third, fourth, fifth from Image. Really? And this is an Image book. I thought that was with the announcement. Gosh darn it. No, the one that I got was basically just telling us don't oversell because you're not going to get reprints on your exclusives. I didn't hear the one about not doing reprints. Second. But again, I mean... What? Yeah. What? No more second I printings for minutes. Thumbs down on this show already. <laughs> well, it happens. Uh, so yeah, well. it says that from from Bleeding Cool, there's okay. no more second printings from Image moving forward, right? So even if you see a lot of exclusives pop up for something, you, your your first print will be the only print from Image. Now, will other companies follow suit? Not currently, but who knows? But so yes. Second number 55, put your orders in early to make sure it locks you in. And then that comes out January. But what's cool coming up December 15th is the box set trade. If you don't want to buy that big graphic and you want to like have it more manageable, 125. Yeah, that, that, I like that one too. That would be good on my shelf back here. The um, printing, the NY New York City Comic Con printing of this one, uh, 55 is going for like $300 on eBay. Isn't what? That crazy? It's not yeah. Bad. Wait. It's it's just a like a print of it that you could get at the New York Comic Con. The and people are selling it for like a shit ton of money. Yeah, like a poster, like a print. Was it free or did you pay for it? 
I don't know. That's a good question. I'm not sure. But I was like doing research. Holy hell. In the amount of time that this show has taken, I have 152 text messages. I'll get to them later. Uh, let me look it up real quick. What so, did he do? Did someone, did someone get hurt? No, that's actually kind of normal nowadays. Luckily, this week, though, it's not all hate mail. Last week was all hate mail. Saga 55. Mm, okay. My my personal text messages are linked to the Bird City Comics one, so I get like oh, all the... Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay, so the NYCC 2021 Exclusive Saga 55 print. Oh, this one's signed by Vaughn mm. and Fiona Staples. Right now it has one bid at 125 Okay, I feel like uh, buying something signed, you lose out on getting it signed by somebody. I mean, I understand if it's someone that has passed and you can't get some, you can't get it. But if you can go to a con and meet somebody and just talk to them for a little bit, it's kind of worth it. Yeah, I mean, I thought about doing the Robert Downey Jr. signing. Two dollar super sticker. Oh, thank you. Nice, thank you. I was like, thank you. Sticker? Dave's like, I got those people that gave you a thumbs down and now I'm giving you two pounds worth, which is like a lot, right? Thank you. We appreciate that. I don't know the exact conversions rate. Uh, but yeah, there is a paper shortage. You know how I kind of like gauge wh like where the economy is? <laughs> this is so bad. And you guys are giving me so much shit. I go to Costco today. No toilet paper. No paper towels. They have a limit on the water bottles again. So whenever I see that shit start going up, I'm like, okay, maybe maybe there is something to this whole paper shortage thing. If you don't grade it, Brian K. Vaughn will sign five items for free. Nice. That's cool of him. He seems like a really interesting dude. I kind of want to meet mm -hmm. him. Yeah. Actually, it was cool that he, he and Fiona share 50-50 splits of Saga. That made me like him more. That is really cool. But yeah, you're right. That's what Tony and Trish do. So mm -hmm. kind of the same idea. That poor woman has been working nonstop. Like she'll text at like three in the morning and she's still working. I was like, dude, do you ever sleep? And she's like, no, I don't. I'm just up all the time working on all these books. Oh, yeah. Dog um, Days comes out soon. Yeah. Dog Days is going to be another epic one, too. All right. Let's keep on going. So I like Fiona. I, I look forward to hopefully seeing her at a con one day. Oh, wouldn't that be awesome? So Fiona, if you're out there, thank you for being amazing. You seem like a really cool person from all the interviews that we've watched. And yeah. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. All right. So on to new comic book day picks. Uh, ooh, I got two this week. Hell yeah. You're up first, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> um, so Soul Plumber from DC is going to have a second print. It comes out Wednesday. If you didn't get the first print, second print's cool too. And it's, the color's a little bit different. It's brighter. Like the sludgy green is just pops. But from what I've heard, it's a really good story and it's your second chance to get it. So I figured... I mean, I've heard a lot of, I, I, I've heard nothing but good things about this story. And it, I know it's already on issue two, so you might be having to, um, but I'm pretty sure they're going to a second print on number two also, I think. Where are your other five picks? There's so many that I kind of just, this week I was just like, <laughs> I can't, come on, there's, like, I, I took a lot of pictures and I was like, what? I can't, I can't keep doing this to you guys. So I just pick one. <laughs> right? I'm just, this, this, Dude, this come on. There's always so many every week. I'm like, I'm going to go broke. Like what I got that I'm really happy about is the Star, Star Trek magazine comes out and there's two different covers. I got them. I got them. Well, there's three different covers, but I got two. Oh, nice. But I know Star Trek is a, a niche. Niche. <laughs> That's how we're pronouncing it. Um, how, how you say it? Niche. Niche. But I've heard people uh, say niche, like quiche. Oh, niche. Okay, either way. Hmm. But Soul Plumber, to me, it, it's it's not as niche. Right? Okay. More, people, more people would be open to... Anyway, go ahead. Talk about your... 
Uh, okay, so this King Shark, man, like, how can you not look at this and be like, okay, that's badass, right? It's such a cool cover. I This is Suicide, Suicide Squad, King Shark, number three. This is the Matina cover. And I just think it's, <laughs> I just really like it. I'm a huge fan, obviously, of the blank backgrounds. I, I think that just kind of lets the character shine here. And I just think it's, it's badass. So that was my first pick. Uh, and then my other one, you guys already know, huge Frizen fan and Catwoman number 37. I just think it's beautiful. I'm going to add it to my collection. Her use of lines and flowers is uh, very strategic. It's very old school. I like I like that she took so much of what she studied from art school and still applies it to how she creates in her composition. So those two are mine. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Mel. That King Shark is badass. Like you just, he's looking straight at you. Uh, Star Trek, boo. Come on, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyways. I uh, mean, look, I like a lot of different things. A lot of different things I like. <laughs> <laughs> They'll love you, though. King Shark looks like me after I accidentally hit the front cam on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. Look at the detail there. But I mean, yeah. I like the like the little slits coming down and Aunt, come here real quick. First off, say hi to Mel. Mel's on right now. What's up, people? What do you think of this King Shark cover? He looks like a badass. Right? That's what Mel said. Mel said this is badass. Uh, it's just a neat. It's a neat cover. So, do you uh, think he's wearing his own teeth around his neck, <clears throat> or someone else's? They're like his baby teeth from when he was a baby shark. Nice. Yeah. No, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, all right, let's keep going. So those are stuff, guys, if you don't have anything to buy tomorrow. These are our picks. We highly recommend. If you haven't already, please check out Nearing Nirvana. We go live every Friday. We are the pregame to the Hot 10. So come and check us out. We go live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. We have Facebook, Instagram. We have a neglected Twitter that Jen's supposed to handle. But we don't tweet much. Do we, Jen? Our bird has fallen out of its nest and it's just rolling around the ground. I don't know what to tweet. Just I like tweet. people's tweets. What's going live tonight? Oh, and our show this Friday. What's our show going to be about? Okay. Our appreciation covers. <laughs> <laughs> huh. <laughs> Art appreciation covers. Because everybody's been talking about that kiss cover and... So we're going to be talking about all these different covers that kind of pull from real life art. Um, anyways. It's, it's going to be a lot of slides. <laughs> it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a long show. So yeah, make sure that you guys tune into that. And of course, check out Bird City Comics. I almost showed you guys tonight, but then I decided against it. But I almost showed you guys that we are going to be launching a Department of Truth ice cream man set that goes together for a certain reason. I've been talking to you and Lucy about this for a while. Show it. It's awesome. Very, very, very excited. Wait, and I was going to release it, but yeah. I can't see how many people are watching. How many people are watching? 33. Show it. I, I don't know how to. Like, Anthony walked out. I don't even know like how to get into his... How to Put get it on into your his... cell phone. Put it on your cell phone. Go like this. Pieces and stuff. No, it's all on his computer. Like, he has all these folders and... You don't have it on your phone? No. I just don't... I just don't... Uh... Anthony! Sorry if that was loud. <laughs> Sorry. Ant, the 33 that matter. Well, now it's at 31, so two of you apparently. Oh, no! <laughs> show it on Food Chain. That's a good idea. Right there after this, go. we're going on Food Chain. We can show it on that. But it's yeah. such a badass set, and I have a feeling it's going to do well. So make sure that you're subscribed. If you go over to the Bird City Comics website, you can subscribe at the top, and then you get a text every time we go live, or we drop a book, or whatever. So, yeah, sign up for that if you haven't already. And I think on that's... food chain tonight, you'll show it. Yeah. And so, okay. like, what did you just volunteer? Probably. We'll probably okay. show it. Pinky, pinky um, square. Pinky square. No, pinky square. No, I can't pinky, pinky square. square. That's, like, binding. That's legally binding. What if he says uh, no? It's, uh, it's, it's nice. You're going to, like, be like, wow, that's a really, that's a really nice set, Laura. <laughs> I'm like, thanks. Anyway. Uh, are we done? <laughs> are, are, are we finished? Is that it? <clears throat> oh, oh. Britt asked me to ask everybody who's still watching, probably like 20 people. 
We're at 30. Do you like the artist? You know how Incense. we do the character stats? Do yeah. you like, do are people who watched or are watching, do you like the artist stats? Or can you do that? I better? thought they were awesome. I think that was such a cool little ad. It's like looking at the back of a baseball card. Uh, hi, Nathan. Uh, the Food Chain is a show that Aaron Yee, who's in the chat, Comic and Book Food. Comic Book Food Chain, yep. And Anthony, he is the owner of Bird City Comics. Our friend Tim, he works for us. He's our one of our managers. And then myself, we all do a podcast right after this. So look up Comic Book Food Chain on YouTube. It's only like 30 minutes long. It's kind of similar to this. Like Anthony will pick something and then we talk about like all the different. It's just, it's a fun show. It's a little bit different. It's a little goofy, but they love the stats and the color palette. Yeah. Cool. Good stuff. All right, guys. We'll have a great night and hopefully we will see you this Friday <laughs> on Nearing Nirvana. And if not, we'll see you next Tuesday for another episode of Comic Book Women. Bye.